Through over 25 years in over 8 different regions, Ash Ketchum has had loads of awesome and iconic traveling companions. With the likes of Misty and Brock the OGs, to, uh, Go and Chloe. But today, people, today, I'll be creating new and awesome teams for all of Ash's main traveling companions. These new teams will be unique blends of previously owned Pokemon, as well as some new ones that I think would make a great fit for them. The rules for this video today are... None, really. I'll be including Pokemon all the way up to the latest generation, which, as of recording of this video, is the Paldea region. Also, this is going to be every trainer with their most powered up team, so expect pretty much every Pokemon to be fully evolved, with a few exceptions. Alright then, let's not waste any more time, and let's begin with Ash's longest and most iconic companion, Brock. Brock's new team would be Steelix, Blissey, Toxicroak, Swampert, Garganacell, and Alolan Raichu. Alright, so this new Brock team is pretty much what you'd expect. We've got Steelix, who's probably Brock's strongest Pokemon, period. The two have been together forever, and Steelix even has access to an impressive Mega Evolution. Then we have Blissey, who's another longtime Brock Pokemon. We all remember seeing the crazy things this Pokemon could do as a Happiny, and now as a Blissey, it's undoubtedly even more powerful. Similarly, I also think that Blissey here would be a great support Pokemon, likely working as the team healer. Toxicroak is the evolved form of Krogunk, who may just be Brock's most iconic Pokemon ever. Just check out what he did here against Dialga. Now just imagine if this thing was to evolve. Next is Swampert. This is another evolution of an already owned Brock Pokemon. That of course being his Marsh Stomp. Swampert would certainly add some solid type diversity to this team. Plus, I always hated how Ash and May got to fully evolve their Hoenn starters, and Brock kinda just got stuck with... <coughs> Next up is Garganacell, a brand new Pokemon added to Brock's artillery. I mean, this Pokemon just makes sense to me. It's just a solid rock-type Pokemon with access to Salt Cure and its new ability Purifying Salt. It just fits perfect on this team. And finally is Alolan Raichu. Now, this one may seem like an oddball pick, but hear me out. This Pokemon was selected to pay homage to Brock's longtime travel companion and probably best friend, Ash. I could totally see Brock capturing a Pikachu and then eventually evolving it while traveling through Alola. Now for Ash's next OG traveling companion, Misty. Misty's new team would consist of Gyarados, Politoed, Togekiss, Golduck, Clawitzer, and Golisopod. Now this new team's epic and would definitely destroy any challengers at the Cerulean Gym. Let's take a deep dive into this team, shall we? First up is Gyarados. This thing's Misty's main powerhouse. It's as intimidating as they come, plus it can Mega Evolve, which is always great. Politoed is another powerhouse of Misty's. I mean, it's so great, it was able to defeat the world champion. Next up is Togekiss. This is something we would all want to have happen. Togepi is arguably Misty's most iconic Pokemon ever, and I for one found it so stupid that she released it. This Togekiss would add some much-needed type diversity to this team. Golduck is just Psyduck fully evolved. Next up, we've got Clawitzer. This is obviously the final form of the Clauncher that she caught in the Aim to be a Pokemon Master series. And the hype behind this Pokemon was certainly real, as she had to beat the strongest trainer in the world to capture it. And finally, my big surprise for Misty's team is Golisopod. I honestly could see a really cute story here with Misty and her Golisopod. Now, we all know Misty has a huge phobia of bug Pokemon. So imagine she's in Alola and runs into a Wimpod, and naturally, both Misty and the Wimpod would freak out upon encountering each other. But then eventually, she'd go on to capture it, and it would help her overcome her fear of bugs, and she would be rewarded with an awesomely powerful bug and water-type beast. Now for one of Ash's most hated companions, Tracy Sketchit. Tracy's new team would consist of Venomoth, Azumarill, Smeargle, Grafii, Shuckle, and Cleavor. Venomoth was actually already on Tracy's team, so he's just gonna stay as is. Azumarill is just Meryl Evolved. Then we've got Smeargle and Grafii, which are both art-focused Pokemon. And Tracy's really only known for sketching in his artwork, so the two would be very fitting on this team. Next is Shuckle. Let's be honest, Tracy kinda sucks, so I needed to give him an epic Pokemon to help boost his status. And who better for that than Shuckle? And finally, the big surprise of this team is Cleavor which of course would be a result of his old Scyther evolving. Now, I don't really know how this could happen, seeing as you kinda gotta go to ancient Hisui to get one, but whatever, this is all hypothetical, so it's all in good fun. 
Alright, now let's advance forward to Ash's traveling companion through the Hoenn region, beginning with my girlfriend, May. May's new team would be Blaziken, Snorlax, Venusaur, Glaceon, Altaria, and Fione. This team was actually kind of similar to May's team that we saw in the Diamond and Pearl anime, and also, this team's pretty stacked. Blaziken and Venusaur are absolute chads, so they'll be staying as is. And I could even see May using different forms of these Pokemon, like their Megas or Gigantamaxes. Glaceon will also remain the same, as I imagine it's a great Pokemon for contests and competitions. Snorlax is just Munchlax, but in his final form. And then finally, we have two brand new Pokemon, Altaria and Fione. Altaria is here to add some type diversity, but it's also a callback to a Swablu that may help nurse back to health in the Advanced series. She actually almost caught it too, but it dipped once its friends arrived. And then finally is Fione. This selection is based around the Manaphy that May was very close with in that Pokemon Ranger movie. I think the laws of physics and balance in the Pokemon universe may be thrown off if May was to actually have Manaphy on her team, so I think Fione is the next best thing. Alright, now let's do May's annoying little brother, Max. Max's team would consist of Gatlade, Bayonet, Breloom, Mighty Enna, Slacking, and Porygon Z. I'll begin with Slacking. I honestly could see Max being given a Slackoth as his first ever Pokemon from his dad. This would be a perfect Pokemon to teach Max about strategy and patience thanks to its Truant ability. Then eventually it could evolve into a powerful Slacking. Bayonet, Breloom, Mighty Enna, and Gallade are all based on Pokemon that Max had previously befriended, so I of course had to throw him on the team. Then finally we have Porygon Z on this team, because Max is a pretty big nerd, and was basically a walking computer for the Advanced series, so Porygon Z compliments him nicely. I honestly did consider using this last slot on that Jirachi from the movie that Max befriended, but that thing was just too OP. I think the ace of this team would likely be Gallade. I could see Max using Mega Evolution on this thing, which would mirror his possibly game counterpart Wally from the Oras games. Now we'll move forward a generation to my absolute favorite Poke Girl, Dawn. Dawn's new and powered up team would be Empoleon, Lopunny, Mamoswine, Ambipom, Hisuian Typhlosion, and Serena. First off, let's start off with Empoleon. Now I know her most iconic Pokemon is Piplop, and it's mostly because of how cute and comedic it is but it's time for this thing to reach its final form. I mean, most of the other Pokegirls get their starters in their final form, so why shouldn't the best? Next up is Lopunny, which is the obvious evolution of her Baneri. This Pokemon would definitely be more likely to win contests now, for, uh, obvious reasons. And hey, maybe she could Mega Evolve too. Mamoswine stays the same as it was a great Pokemon for Dawn that actually went through a pretty decent arc. Ambipom is back on this team because it was so stupid how they had it leave in the actual show. Ping Pong? Really? I decided to evolve Dawn's Quillava into Hisuian Typhlosion. I honestly thought we were going to get something like this in Pokemon Journeys. I mean, Dawn did have a Quillava the time they did that time travel Hisuian arc, but nope, we didn't get this unfortunately. But boy, would it have been awesome. Finally, we have Serena. It's added to this team to mix in a modern Pokemon to Dawn's team. It's also a grass type, which Dawn has never actually used, so why not throw a hot one onto her team? From one Poke Girl to the next, now it's time for Iris. One of the most underrated traveling companions of Ash, and certainly the most powerful. Iris' new team looks like this. Haxorus, Dragonite, Excadrill, Garchomp, Milotic, and Verizion. So Haxorus, Dragonite, and Excadrill were already on her team in the past, so we're gonna stick with them. Garchomp's added to this team because Iris does have a Gibble, so I decided to fully evolve it into one of the most powerful Pokemon ever. Plus, this could be homage to Cynthia, a trainer Iris always looked up to and even had an epic battle with. My Lotix on this team because, uh, it's awesome? And finally, I threw a Verizion onto this team for some much needed type diversity. In the Keldeo and Kira movie, she was even seen riding a Verizion into battle, and honestly, the two just look good together. And giving Iris a legendary isn't as far-fetched as some of the other companions, seeing how Iris is the strongest trainer in Unova. Now the question is, would this team have beaten Cynthia in the Masters 8? Now for Silent. And coming off the heels of Iris, this team may be a bit underwhelming. His new team would be Crustle, Superior, Rotom, Simisage, Simipore, and Simiseer. So Crustle was Silent's best Pokemon from the actual series, so he'll stick around. 
Superior is just a fitting Pokemon, and he is a Grass Specialist, so why not give him the best option in all of Unova? Then these last four Pokemon are all kind of based around Silent's interest in cooking. Rotom has the ability to become a freezer and an oven, so that could be like a portable little kitchen in the form of an awesome Pokemon. And then the other half of this team will go to the Elemental Monkeys. Simi Sage is obviously the evolved form of Pansage, which was his signature Pokemon. But I added the other two monkeys here, because I think they would help round out an awesome cooking team. Simi Sage could grow the food, Simi Seer could warm it up, and Simi Poor provides the drinks. This team might not be all that powerful, but they would certainly be a lot of fun. Now we'll move on to the X and Y gang, beginning with the genius himself, Clement. Clement's new team would be Luxray, Diggersby, Chestnut, Magnezone, Rotom, and Maynectric. Luxray and Diggersby were on Clement's actual team, and they were amazing, so they'll be staying as is. Chestnut's just the final form of Clement's pretty iconic Chespin. Magnezone's an incredibly fitting Pokemon, and I'm honestly really surprised that he doesn't actually have one by now. He does have a Magnemite and a Magneton, but no Magnezone. Plus, it matches the Magnezone he uses in the Battle Chateau in X and Y. Next is Rotom, and I know I just used him on Silence team, but I mean there's literally no Pokemon more versatile than him. I could see Clement using Rotom a ton outside of battle, mostly with inventions and various technological endeavors. Finally, the last new addition to Clement's team is Maynectric. It's a really underrated Pokemon, but the main reason it's here is to give Clement a Mega Pokemon. Now for his little sister, Bonnie. I won't give Bonnie a full team of six, cause she's just little. But with that being said, Bonnie's team would be Dedenne, Go-Goat, Gudra, and on special occasions, Squishy. The Dene's the easy one on here. During the X and Y series, she cared for this like it was her very own. And yeah, it was technically Clement's, but I'm certain once she's ready to become a trainer, the Dene will be all hers. Next is Go Goat. I honestly think Go Goat's such an underrated Pokemon from Kalos. I could see Bonnie riding around on a Skiddo while she's little, then eventually a Go Goat as she gets older. Gudra is on here because I think she wants to be just like Ash. She always admired both Ash and her older brother. So I think it would be pretty fitting to have her use the Pokemon that Ash used to destroy her brother in battle. Then finally is Squishy. Now, I don't think this would be a full-time Pokemon on her team, but just temporary for major battles or world-ending type events. Kind of like how it was portrayed in the XYZ arc. She probably wouldn't be able to use the full 100% Zygarde, but likely the 10% or even maybe 50%. And we'll wrap up the Kalos crew with one of the most popular traveling companions ever, Serena. Serena's new team will be Delphox, Pangoro, Sylveon, Milotic, Beautifly, and Absol. Delphox and Sylveon are iconic Serena Pokemon, so of course they will remain. However, I did decide to evolve her Pancham full on into a Pangoro. I know it won't be as cute, but I still think it will be cool and do well in battles and competitions. Milotic, Beautifly, and Absol will all be Pokemon caught, trained, and raised by Serena while she's in Hoenn. Both the Beautifly and Milotic evolutionary lines are incredibly similar to the arc that Serena went through in the XY anime. Not that she really started off ugly or anything, but that she was able to be herself, come out of her shell, and just become an awesome, beautiful character overall. Also, Beautifly could pay homage to her new best friend, May. And then finally, we've got Absol. It's just an awesome Pokemon, but the main reason it's here is in reference to Serena's in-game counterpart. Plus, I definitely want it to Mega Evolve, because the more Megas, the better. Now this team would have whooped on Ash's Kalos team. Now we'll head to Alola, and we'll begin with Lana. Lana's new team will be Primarina, Vaporeon, Wishiwashi, Araquanid, Gyarados, and Arctivish. Primarina is her main Z-move using ace from the actual series, so we'll be keeping her as is. Next is Vaporeon. Now we all know that Lana's got Nevi. However, she never actually evolved it. This is something that totally bewildered me. I mean, this was the perfect opportunity to give her a Vaporeon, but they never did. So, fine, I'll do it myself. Next is Wishy Washy, and more specifically, Totem Wishy Washy, just like the one she uses in the manga. Now we've got Araquanid. This is mostly based around the fact that she has one in the games, plus Araquanid is a sick Pokemon, and I think it's a crazy cool contrast to see a giant, terrifying spider on a cute little girl's team. Next up we've got Gyarados. 
And this is predicated on the fact that Lana is constantly depicted as fishing. And when fishing, there's no more common Pokemon to find than Magikarp. Then, it would just come down to Lana doing some switch training with the puny fish. And finally is Arctivish. This selection is another one based on some inspiration from Ash Ketchum. After meeting Ash's Dracovish in Journeys, I could totally see Lana using the other Galarian Water-type fossil. Now we've got one of my least favorite companions, Sophocles. His team would be Vikavolt, Togedemaru, Electivire, Alolan Raichu, Alolan Golem, and Electrode. Vikavolt is great, so of course he's staying. Togedemaru sucks, and so does Sophocles, so it couldn't be a better match. Electivire and Alolan Golem are added to more closely mirror Sophocles teams from the Gen 7 games. I added Electrode because Sophocles has this cute little Electrode keychain, so why not give him the real thing too? And finally, his new ace is Alolan Raichu. It was kind of surprising to me that he didn't actually use one in the real anime, so I'll give it to him here. And of course, he'll be able to use Alolan Raichu's signature Z-move, Stoke Spark Surfer. Now for my girl, Mallow. Mallow's team will be Serena, Shaman, Lorantis, Drampa, Meganium, and Comfey. Serena was a great Pokemon, so she's staying as is. As is Shaman. I think it's incredibly awesome how she has a mythical, so of course it'll remain on Mallow's new team. Lorantis and Comfey are just some solid Alolan Pokemon that are also feminine plants, which is obviously Mallow's forte. Meganium's a nice Gen 2 Pokemon to add to her team, and I'll be honest, Meganium's pretty forgettable and underwhelming, so it could always use some more time in the spotlight. And then finally is Drampa. This one may seem like a bit of a weird pick, but Mallow actually befriended a Drampa when she was younger. Then, years later, she ran into the same Drampa. So for this video, I'd have Mallow capture that Drampa. Now for Lily. Lily is another traveling companion that I will not be giving a full team of six to, but her team will still be awesome. Lily's new team is Alolan Ninetales, Espeon, and Magearna. Beginning with Alolan Ninetales, it's just the evolved form of the one Pokemon that Lily actually owns. I was pretty surprised that the writers didn't have Lily evolve her Alolan Vulpix, so I'll just do it here. Next up is Espeon. This Pokemon just fits Lily. It could also work as a perfect contrast to her brother Gladion, who uses an Umbreon. Plus, it's a friendship evolution, so it would further develop her relationship with her Pokemon. And then finally is Magearna. This one's just right. I mean, if her brother can have a legendary, she can too, right? Finally, for Ash's last Alolan traveling buddy, Kiawe. Kiawe's team would be Charizard, Alolan Marowak, Turdinator, Darmanitan, Magmortar, and Hisuian Arcanine. The first three, Charizard, Alolan Marowak, and Turdinator, are Kiawe's actual three Pokemon, so we'll be keeping them as is. Magmortar is just a sick Pokemon who I think would actually fit Kiawe incredibly well. The Darmanitan on this team would be an interesting one. This Darmanitan would come as a result of a trade from Go. You know, the one Go caught in Unova. The Zen Mode form-changing Darmanitan would be an epic addition to this team. And finally, it's Hisuian Arcanine. I have absolutely no idea how this would be pulled off, but I just know it will be epic to see. Now we have Ash's final traveling companion, Go. And Go's team is gonna be a sick one. We've got Cinderace, Inteleon, Rillaboom, Suicune, Eternatus, and Mew. Now I went absolutely crazy with this team, and it might be the most OP team in the anime since Tobias's. So as crazy as it is, Go actually had something very similar to this team in Pokemon Journeys. He had Cinderace, Inteleon, Suicune, and Eternatus. And yeah, between them there was a ton of mixing, matching, releasing, but he did own all of these Pokemon at one point or another. He did have a Grookey that he caught kind of late into the series, but I was honestly kind of surprised to see him not evolve even once. So here, let's have the Grass Monkey reach his final form. And then finally, I gave Go Mew. This is Go's ultimate goal as a character, to capture Mew, and he actually came pretty close towards the end of Journeys. And while I was happy to see him not actually capture the first ever mythical, I decided to give him one just for the sake of this video. This is Go's ultimate team, and boy is it OP. It's actually kind of insane, and it honestly might be able to beat Ash's Journeys team. Well guys, that's that. 
I'm not giving Chloe a new team because she flipping sucks and is barely even a character. Thanks guys for checking out today's video. Make sure you drop a like on this video and be sure to comment what you think of these teams and any changes you would make.